Example 3 now. This is an example with partial fractions with um, quadratic factors, which cannot be factorized. Okay, obviously we're referring to this denominator here. Okay, so based on what we have said earlier on in the um, introduction to partial fractions, okay, we mentioned that, well, the first thing that we do is always to factorize the denominator as much as we can, as much as we possibly can, right? So in this case, this is the as much as possibly can, okay? Because this quadratic equation is not factorizable any further. So now what? Okay, now, like we mentioned earlier on, and in the, all the exa other examples that we've seen earlier on, okay, we know that this single fraction can be split up into a sum of two simpler fractions. Okay, so then obviously it will be one uh, a over x plus one. Okay, and in this case, this is where all right you have to be slightly more careful. Okay, because the denominator here is a quadratic denominator. The numerator will always always be one degree, at least one degree lower than the denominator. So if the denominator is a degree two polynomial like this, the de the numerator will be of degree one, which is linear like this. Okay? So remember that it must always be one degree lower. So in this case it will be x plus c. Okay? Then now what? Okay? Now it's the same thing as what you have done so far all along. Okay, and that would be to multiply throughout by the denominator here. Okay, so as to flatten the entire equation. Okay, so how do we do that? We'll multiply throughout. We'll get the left hand side. We'll be left with only 5x squared plus 7x plus 8. Okay, equals to uh, the right hand side. A will be only left with x squared plus 2x plus 3 to multiply with. Okay, and of course our bx plus c will be multiplied with okay um, x plus 1 alright so this is multiplying throughout okay we flatten it now the next thing to do is obviously to solve for our a b and c alright so the first step is of course let, let us take a look analyze this equation here and we realize that aha when we were to substitute in x equals to negative 1 all right, this entire bracket will become zero, and zero multiplied by anything will give me a zero, and therefore I'll be able to find a. All right, substitute in x equals to negative one. All right, so to the left hand side we'll have five minus seven plus eight will be equal to the right hand side will be a multiplied by one minus two plus three, and whatever that's left behind here will be a zero. So working this out. All right. On the left hand side, we have my five minus seven plus eight. That will give us a six. Okay. And of course, to our right hand side, we'll be left with two a, and therefore a is equal to three. Okay. Now that we have found our a, then of course the next thing to do will be, of course, to find b and c. How do we go? How how are we going to find b and c? Well, very simple. We look at this, and then we think about it. Hey, you know when x is equal to zero, b x will be 0 and b will disappear so I think we can need more space here so let us put it okay great so what we do is of course we're going to substitute in x equals to 0 so to the left hand side alright we have 8 the right hand side we have 3 okay because 0 plus 0 plus 3 will give us a 3 so 3a and we know that a is 3 therefore 3 multiplied by 3 and here we have a 0 because when x is 0 bx is 0 so we have a c alright so c multiplied by 1 that will give us a c here is 8 and here is 9 so we bring this 9 over we know that well c will be equal to negative 1 okay now of course the last job now is of course to find b right our last remaining constant that we don't know so how to find b well very simple again isn't it I mean you should be pretty good at this now okay so we substitute in x equals to 1 alright so well, it can be any number alright it can be 2 can be 10 can be any number alright but I like 1 because 1 is a lot easier to work out so to the left hand side we'll have 5 plus 7 plus 8 alright is equal to the right hand side here we have 1 plus 2 which is a 3 3 plus a 3 
will give us a 6 so there's a 6a over there okay so 6a a is 3 so therefore 6 multiplied by 3 and of course we have uh, we have, well an x when x is 1 so bx will be b okay b plus c so since we know that c is negative 1 so it will be b minus 1 multiplied by when x is 1 this is 2 okay so working this out well, it's not a difficult it's not a difficult um, equation to work out isn't it I mean you should have no problem with this this will be 18 um, plus 2b minus 2 so working it out we'll get b is equal to 2 alright so uh, huh, I think we're gonna need a little bit more space okay right so now that we found our a b and c well we can safely say that the equation uh, sorry the fraction okay Right, the fraction. This is the question. Some of, uh, I mean, you can you can probably see it, uh, see it in, on the screen right now. Okay, so this one can be written as. Okay, remember that earlier on. Okay, uh, this is what we split up into. Right, so now we have found our a, our b, and our c. All we have to do now is to substitute in our a, b, and c. Okay, so we know that a is equal to positive three and uh, b is equal to positive 2 and c is equal to negative 1 therefore uh, it will become 3 over x plus 1 okay plus uh, b is 2 so therefore 2x minus 1 because there's a c over x squared plus 2x plus 3 alright so this is the partial fraction for this fraction okay now that we are talking about partial fractions involving denominator with non-factorizable quadratic expressions like this, okay? What about non-factorizable quadratic expressions that are repeated? Okay, now this is possible. All right, how are we going to do it? How are we, what are we going to do? How, how are we going to split them up? Okay, now based on the example we learned earlier on on our repeated factors okay repeated linear factor in this case this is repeated quadratic factor but the treatment okay or rather the, the way we deal with this is the same okay we're going to split them up so we have a over x plus one so this is simple okay now now because this is quadratic okay so we're going to have bx plus c over now but again because this is repeated as well so we must have two okay so this is the first one with power 1 alright then of course we have our dx plus e alright over x squared plus 2 squared alright so uh, we have bx plus c because this is a quadratic factor and therefore the numerator must be 1 degree lower alright and of course uh, we have to repeat because this quadratic factor is repeated alright likewise for this one Okay, this example here, same thing. Okay, we just got to do it once more. Okay, because it's repeated three times. So we have bx plus c over x squared plus 2. Okay, then of course we have dx plus e over x squared plus 2 squared. And of course we have fx plus g over x squared plus 2 cubed. Alright, now like I said earlier on, chances are very low that you'll be uh, faced with this kind of questions in exams or in tests okay but the whole idea of bringing this up to you is to highlight to you that questions like this can be solved the usual way that you already know okay and uh, honestly to solve this isn't difficult at all this is just plain tedious okay yeah, I mean look at this you have five unknowns to solve for this one you have wow seven unknowns to solve for okay so uh, now you, you most probably don't want to do this but uh, the idea is you can do this if you need to alright